Hi everyone. I've missed being on Periscope, but I thought I would do uh, Periscope tonight. Um, I just found a video from End Times Prophecy that I want you all to watch. And as you can see the title, it is exactly what is going to happen, what Satan is thinking, and what he's planning on doing in the end times. And we know what we're in the end times now. And some of these things that, that are happening now are being have already been fulfilled. Satan has really been working hard, and you will see that by the video. So I'm going to get ready to start. Good boy. Good, good evening to artist. I hope you enjoy this video, and I will turn the camera around now. And it's only about a nine-minute video, so and then I'll we'll I'll talk a little bit later afterwards. So here goes. As the people of God approach the perils of the last days, Satan holds earnest consultation with his angels as to the most successful plan of overthrowing their faith. He sees that the popular churches are already lulled to sleep by his deceptive power. By pleas in sophistry and lying wonders, he can continue to hold them under his control. Therefore, he directs his angels to lay their snares, especially for those who are looking for the second advent of Christ and endeavoring to keep all the commandments of God. Says the great deceiver, we must watch those who are calling the attention of the people to the Sabbath of Jehovah. They will lead many to see the claims of the law of God and the same light which reveals the true Sabbath reveals also the ministration of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary and shows that the last work for man's salvation is now going forward. Hold the minds of the people in darkness till that work is ended and we shall secure the world and the church also. The Sabbath is the great question which is to decide the destiny of souls. We must exalt the Sabbath of our creating. We have caused it to be accepted by both worldlings and church members. Now the church must be led to unite with the world in its support. We must work by signs and wonders to blind their eyes to the truth and lead them to lay aside reason and the fear of God and follow custom and tradition. I will influence popular ministers to turn the attention of their hearers from the commandments of God, that which the scriptures declare to be a perfect law of liberty shall be represented as a yoke of bondage. The people accept their minister's explanations of scripture and do not investigate for themselves. Therefore, by working through the ministers, I can control the people according to my will. But our principal concern is to silence this sect of Sabbath keepers. We must excite popular indignation against them. We will enlist great men and worldly wise men upon our side and induce those in authority to carry out our purposes. Then the Sabbath which I have set up shall be enforced by laws, the most severe and exacting. Those who disregard them shall be driven out from the cities and villages and made to suffer hunger and privation. When once we have the power we will show what we can do with those who will not swerve from their allegiance to God. We led the Romish church to inflict imprisonment, torture and death upon all those who refused to yield to her decrees. 
And now that we are bringing the Protestant churches and the world into harmony with this right arm of our strength, we will finally have a law to exterminate all who will not submit to our authority. When death shall be made the penalty of violating our Sabbath, then many who are now ranked with commandment keepers will come over to our side. But before proceeding to these extreme measures, we must exert all our wisdom and subtlety to deceive and ensnare those who honor the true Sabbath. We can separate many from Christ by worldliness, lust, and pride. They may think themselves safe because they believe the truth, but the indulgence of appetite or the lower passions, which will confuse judgment and destroy discrimination, will cause their fall. Go, make the possessors of lands and money drunk with the cares of this life. Present the world before them in its most attractive light, that they may lay up their treasure here and fix their affections upon earthly things. We must do our utmost to prevent those who labor in God's cause from obtaining means to use against us. Keep the money in our own ranks. The more means they obtain, the more they will injure our kingdom by taking from us our subjects. Make them care more for money than for the upbuilding of Christ's kingdom and the spread of the truths we hate. And we need not fear their influence, for we know that every selfish, covetous person will fall under our power and will finally be separated from God's people. Through those that have a form of godliness, but know not the power, we can gain many who would otherwise do us great harm. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God will be our most effective helpers. Those of the class who are apt and intelligent will serve as decoys to draw others into our snares. Many will not fear their influence because they profess the same faith. We will thus lead them to conclude that the requirements of Christ are less strict than they once believed, and that by conformity to the world they would exert greater influence with worldlings. Thus they will separate from Christ, then they will have no strength to resist our power, and ere long they will be ready to ridicule their former zeal and devotion. Until the great decisive blow shall be struck, our efforts against commandment keepers must be untiring. We must be present at all their gatherings. In their large meetings especially our cause will suffer much, and we must exercise great vigilance and employ all our seductive arts to prevent souls from hearing the truth and becoming impressed by it. I will have upon the ground as my agents men holding false doctrines mingled with just enough truth to deceive souls. A power, if I could change one thing of the church today, it would get us reconnected to the Holy Spirit and His power. When's the last time you prayed, dear Jesus? Oh, probably today. When's the last time you said, our Father? Eh, within a day. When's the last time you said, dear Holy Spirit? When's the last time you said, dear Holy Spirit, and said a prayer? They're fearful of terms like spiritual formation. And I, I don't have a problem with any term because I know God, God's not afraid of any term. God's not worried about any term. He can defend himself. When, when I need to form uh, my life into a, a stronger being, I need spiritual formation. I need, I need the spirit to truly form me into who he needs to be. When people are afraid of contemplative prayer, I tell them, hey, I always contemplate when I pray. I will also have unbelieving ones present who will express doubts in regard to the Lord's messages of warning to his church. Should the people read and believe these admonitions, we could have little hope of overcoming them. But if we can divert their attention from these warnings, they will remain ignorant of our power and cunning and we shall secure them in our ranks at last. God will not permit his words to be slighted with impunity. If we can keep souls deceived for a time, 
God's mercy will be withdrawn and he will give them up to our full control. As you can see, Satan is really working hard and he is more against us than, than ever because we keep the commandments of God. And those are the people that Satan are going to, going to try to destroy. We know that some of us are going to be martyred at the time, at the time, during a time of trouble, during the Sunday law. We're going to be martyred. But I would rather be martyred than take the mark because if I take the mark, going to be destroyed anyway and I'm not going to go to heaven so I would much rather be martyred and see Jesus because I know that death is but a short time we know we got to stay in the Lord and we've got to stay true to the Sabbath because we can see what Satan is trying to do he's trying to destroy us and he's working as hard as he can things are happening all the time to destroy us and what really shocked me is when I saw that gay choir in the SDA church. I have not known it to happen yet, but it very well could be because Satan is behind all of this LGBT agenda, and he's going to bring them into the church, I'm afraid. And what are we going to do then? Are we going to leave the church, or are we going to find another Adventist church, or what are we going to do? I hope it doesn't happen, and, I, and at this point, I really don't know what I would do. I would be very upset. And I would tell the pastor that I don't think that this should be allowed. But I don't know what's really going to happen. I'm hoping and praying that they stay out of our churches. But the way things are going and the way Satan is trying to destroy us, it wouldn't surprise me that he's going to bring them into the church too, as well as try to change all the bathrooms into uh, bathrooms that anybody can use, which I'm against that altogether. Satan is an awful, awful being, and we need to be on guard all the time and stay in, and get into our Bibles each and every day. I find that when I'm getting into my Bible, he leaves me alone because he can't stand the Word of God. And that's the first thing I do when I get up in the morning after I take my shower and I get dressed. I will go in my, sit in my chair in the living room, and I will open up my Bible and read the passages for that day. And I just love reading the Word of God. It, it brings me closer to Jesus, and I'm sure that if you if you would read the Word of God, you would find the same thing. You'd love the more you love Jesus more and more each and each and every day. The more you read His Word, the more you want to read His Word. And when it comes to the Sabbath, it makes me want to stay in the stay in the Sabbath all that much more. When I realize what Satan is trying to do, trying to destroy the Sabbath, when I know that 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 Sabbath was made by God, and He wants to tear down. What, we, what God made, it makes me very sick. It makes me want to keep the Sabbath all that much more. It makes me say, Satan, you're not going to destroy me. You're not going to destroy the church. We know the church is going to stand, although we do know that there are going to be some that are going to be shaken out. And we want to make sure that we are not the ones to be shaken out because people are going to get scared at the end time, I'm afraid. And, they're, and instead of dying for the, for the faith, they're going to say they're going to take the mark because they don't want to die but we have to stand fast we have to say no we're not going to take the mark and when it's time to flee let us take, go as fast as we can as, and as I understand it we're just going to have angels that are going to take us to where we need to go and to the safety and we know that God's going to protect us during the time of trouble we're not going to be called, uh, kept from the time of trouble but he will take us through it like he did the Israelites during, in Egypt during the time of the seven last plagues. They didn't, weren't kept from them, but they were, they were um, kept away from going from the seven last plagues. I mean, they didn't, they, didn't have to, they didn't take them as long as they had the blood on the door, but they still had to be there during the time of, of the seven last plagues, which we're going to be too. I know a lot of people don't understand that. They think that the rapture is first before the... the uh, <laughs> before before um, tribulation, but that's not biblical. We know we're going to have to go through the tribulation. I know it's a little scary. It's, it's scary for me to th even think about, but I guess well, you could say when we're in Jesus, we really have no worries. He's going to protect us. He's going to keep us safe. But we have to stand fast because look what, look what Satan is doing. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Each and every day I hear of things happening 
that I know that Satan is head of it, and we need to, to say, no, Satan, enough is enough. Keep away. I do not want you in my heart. I don't want you in my life. I don't want you in my home. I don't want you anywhere around me. We need to, to keep Jesus in our heart at all times. Talk to him. Pray to him. Do whatever we can to keep the, the wily slewfoot of the devil away because he's going to do everything he can to try to discourage us from worshiping on the Sabbath and try to tell us, oh, you don't have to keep the Sabbath, you know, but we know that we do. God never changed the Sabbath, and we know that the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath, and, and we all know that no man has a right to change what God instituted, and that is very upsetting to me that they think that they have got the authority to change a day, and that's why everybody goes to church on Sunday, because they're not aware of the fact that the Sabbath was changed. And and we know there's going to be some saved, even though they have never heard about the Sabbath. And my message in this, is to, and the reason for doing these periscopes, is to try to get the message out to those that may not know about the Sabbath, may not know about Jesus, to bring them closer to Jesus. Get their Bible out and study it for themselves. Don't take my word for it, but read the Bible and see what God has to say. That's what I did when I went to those evangelistic meetings. I heard what he had to say, but I also went into the Word to make sure that what he was saying coincided with the Word of God, and it did, and that's why I became a Seventh-day Adventist, and I have never regretted it, and I, and I never will regret it. I love the Lord each and every day. I love the Sabbath. I love the Bible, and I just want to be one of those that's saved in God's kingdom. We can all be there, too. But we have to do our part and we have to stay true to Jesus and stay in and stay in the word and never falter, never waver. Don't let Satan get the upper hand because that's what he's trying to do. He's working as hard as he can to destroy the Seventh-day Adventists. But we know that we're going to stand. The church is going to stand in the last day. Ellen White said it would and we know it's going to stand. So let's all be faithful to Jesus and the church and into and read our Bibles each and every day. And so that we will not take the mark and be ready when Jesus comes. I'm going to call it quits now because I'm falling. I'm starting to fall asleep. But I want to wish you all a blessed night or day wherever you're at. And I thank you for supporting me, the live viewers as well as the replay viewers. Take care. God bless. And bye-bye.